Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, back with a follow on to the uh, initial Rev4 A2000 board I repaired on my channel. Ever since I repaired this, there's always been an intermittent controller issue. I kind of dismissed it because I'd get a controller issue and I'd like mess around and I don't know, power it off, power it on, and it wouldn't do it. And I'd be like, okay, maybe it was just a bad connection. Just testing with Amiga Test Kit, you'll see there is an issue. So I've got a mouse and a joystick plugged in. If I move the joystick left, right, up, up's not registering because it's on all the time, as is down. Fireworks. So there's a problem with that port, but also if I move the mouse, you'll see it's moving the right hand port. Look, R and D, the joystick are moving. So there is an issue. Quite what the issue is, I don't know. It's an interesting one, I've never seen that, I don't think, before. So I'm going to start by just swapping the CIAs around to see if that uh, reveals anything. So I'll switch the power off. Uh, as you can see, I've got the ESD wrist strap on here. Let's just carefully try and prise each of these out. It's quite difficult because of the place they're situated. There we go, let's just put them on there a sec. And uh, you can see I've got a jumper there, that's for in 6 I don't think it's that. I've got a real-time clock connected to them. I don't think it's that because it's done this so many times in the past when there hasn't been anything else connected to it apart from maybe an ID drive. So let's get the CA in. So I put this one in at that position. If it was a CIA problem, these are single wipe sockets aren't they? If it was a CIA problem we should see a difference in behaviour. I'm all inclined to think it's going to be corrosion related, something that I missed in the original repair. So if we do control the ports, yeah look, the same thing is happening again. As you move the mouse, port 2 is uh, showing stuff, and if we move the joystick we can go left, right, and we're getting sporadic stuff, look. So, hmm, that is really interesting. I need to go look at the schematics, I think. It's the first time I've uh, had a control port problem like this on uh, 2000, I think. So the two joystick ports are here. They have no connectivity in common apart from uh, this chip here. Yeah, U202 is that? I think it is. So Denise reads these inputs here from the uh, 74 LS157. Um, it's got to be this. It's got to be this. It's a um, DMUX, isn't it? I think. Or a MUX, rather. Yeah, so this pin here, for example, can select between those two, I think, and that one between those two, etc. Um, that may explain why one port is affecting the other. If something's going wrong here, that could be the issue. I think I'm just going to get a toothbrush and just have a clean around that, see if that improves the situation. I obviously cleaned around there, and it's much worse. I can hardly move the mouse at all now. So, uh, yeah, it's deteriorated, just from a bit of vinegar. And I made sure it's dry. I also resoldered the uh, solder points on the first port nearest the battery. Didn't make any difference at all. So I think the best thing to do at this point actually is use the logic probe. So uh, I'm just going to uh, find somewhere to clip these on. There's loads of places you could connect these on the motherboard, but you know what? I just prefer to stick them in here. These are a little bit bent, actually. Uh, these Molex connections, just because this is what I've done so many times. Yeah, we'll just connect the logic probe there. Uh, switch it on. I'm not booting any software to test or anything here. I'm literally just going to unplug the mouse, plug the joystick into the first port. It's easy to test with a joystick. And I'll try and move the joystick around here. Hang on. So let's uh, just uh, probe some of these here, see what we're getting. It's like we've got a low there. Sorry, I know you can't see that very well. See how that went? Higher low. <laughs> it's like <coughs> a stronger low. That's bizarre. Anyway, let's just see if we can work out where the uh, buttons and directions and things are. These might not be the ones. Some of these, the keyboard might go through some of these. Um, you might have to check both sides because one side's going to be uh, nearer to ground. Why is that pulsing low? Some weird stuff going on here. I kind of expect some highs along here, actually, if I'm honest. This is weird. 
not what I'm expecting. So maybe these are not doing what I think they're doing. That one's really mysterious. I've got one there, look, button. So if we press the button, we can see it's, it's high and it goes low. So that's working. Maybe that's the other button. Let's just put that there, just to see if we can work that out. No, it's not. We've got no highs here, though, have we? Ah, oh, there's the other button. So it would appear the buttons are high and then go low. But it would appear the other inputs don't work that way. Certainly on this board. Let's check these caps here. See, look, that one's low. I really wish there was a PCB Explorer layout for the A2000. So that's flickering. That's really weird. That side's floating, look. And I'm inclined to think that's going to be something to do with the issue. That side's floating. Oh. Might be because there's nothing plugged in here. So, to make uh, simple sense of this, turn it upside down. You can see the solder looks a mess here. I'll uh, desolder that and reflow those later. Um, that was just the result of a quick resolder. But anyway, if we go, uh, hang on, left, right, up, down. So I'm just moving the stick around, pressing fire, nothing uh, here. Oh, look, we've got right. If we go right, low, 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 but it's not high. It should go high, low. High, low should be high when you're not pressing the button. And it gets pulled low. So, but there's a problem with the uh, right direction. Uh, that's left. That works. That's how it should work. Left is working. And then we should have up and down somewhere here. That's down. That's working. And that's up. And that's working. So the direction's there. It's just this one over here, isn't it? Is it that one? Yeah, right. So right is not working. I'm going to make a note of which pin is and uh, indicate that right is not working. But what we can do is if you follow here, there's going to be a pull up and stuff here somewhere for that and obviously the trace to that is is the thing that's missing you know we just got low should go high low i'm going to do the same on this port over here just to make sure that's uh, there's not a problem there but ultimately i think that's what it is i think the pull up is not making it to that so we just need to work out where it is now there are some resistor packs and stuff over here my guess is the pull up is coming from over there somewhere so it's going to be i don't know one of the traces that comes along here somewhere to one of the points here so it's like the brake could be here the brake could be here here anywhere around there but we, we can work that out with a bit of connectivity testing anyway let's just uh, test uh, this port so we'll do the same thing you don't get anything there that one is right yeah so that one's working that right it's going high low then we got left hang on that's on all the time let's just check that again yeah that's on all the time so we've got a different problem there look different problem a moot circle in it like that makes it go off which is weird so this should be up and down yeah down it's working that's just up up's working so we have a problem on each port actually it's a different issue on each one so on this one here it's left isn't it because right was that one and this one was left so yeah we've got the opposite direction problem on this port hmm very interesting so it's the second pin on this port over here and the third pin on this one so the next simple test is to go from ground here to each of the pins so on this first port here the second pin was all right i think wasn't it oh no it wasn't uh, yeah no that one was all right and that's showing 1500 ohms the second one 56 ohms so that's a clue there the other ones look three and a half k 4k7 it's a resistor pack problem, I think, because uh, let's just have a look at this one. Look, this will confirm it. Um, so the second pin was the one that was balked. Let's see what we get there. 1600 ohms. I think that's the clue that the problem. Yeah, look, 4K7 on the next pin. That's what I expect, because I think there's some 4K7 uh, pull-ups or something there, or pull-downs. Yeah, 4K7 again, and the last one, 4K7. So we should see 4K7 on all of these. So that's the clue on that one. That one's faulty. Let's just check the other pins, just in case any of these have got... That's not got 4K7. I don't know where the button is. Which one's the button? Is it one of these end ones here? 
yeah the buttons done differently anyway so you know the up down left right are these four pins here and they're all 4k sevens sorry there's a bit of a glare on that hopefully you can see that but let's just do this one again so start on the right hand side 4k7 that one's correct these are up and down i think or down and up that's a bit short that indicates there's a problem and i'm suspecting it's going to be on the resistor array because when you get those resistor arrays failing they're kind of short together look that's not 4k7 that's very low and that's not 4k7 so i think the next thing uh, i will do actually just based on the fact there's huge variations here i'll remove the solder from here we'll get the hot desold station warmed up to remove that crusty solder but i think we'll start removing some of the stuff around here actually just to have an inspection around there because we've got some resistor packs i'll do connectivity first and work out which one is the resistor pack so just to simplify things rather than just going crazy removing everything i tested from one of the pins over here one of the legit directions and it went to there yeah and then i followed that trace and it goes all the way along here to this resistor array you can see the short there yeah so we know this resistor array certainly relates to the up and down here or that last pin whatever that is it's either up or down but the stand series of the other ones are going to be going the same way if we then switch the meter onto resistance so this resistor pack pin one is up here and if we just uh, go along measure each pin 4k7 so that pin's correct look 79 ohms that's balked 4k7 that's all right that's balked 4k7 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 that's not right 4k7 so we've got some differences there i then just left it on resistance mode check the other resistor packs here so we've got the ic position here then we've got one here now this is one of these ones where it's you measure every a couple of pins every couple of pins is a separate distinct separate resistor 68 ohms so then you've got two pins along 68 ohms two pins along 68 ohms two pins along 68 ohms so those, that resistor packs all right uh, and obviously this is on the other side of the thing anyway so you wouldn't expect a problem here i don't think this is the same sort of thing 120 ohm two resistors uh, i think there's three lots of two resistors oh, hang on no there isn't this one's different again it's got pin one so 120 ohms 120 ohms 120 ohms 120 ohms 120 ohms so yeah i think everything on that side the side that's going to the cias and stuff uh sorry it's not the cias denise picks them up actually so it's this side here so i think i'm just going to just desolder this resistor array but we'll clean up uh, the solder points there at the same time so i can't quite fit on the sd mat here we're just off the edge of the sd mat onto some paper just under there um yeah it's no surprise that when i cleaned around these things with the vinegar this is when it went absolutely crazy it went from just occasionally up registering on its own just every now and again to um you know all out can't control the mouse at all and then in the tests you know all sorts of you know the two ports conflicting with each other you move some on one the other one's going crazy so it could be some bad conductivity here the traces could be damaged on the top side maybe i don't think so though because they're very little very few traces on the top side it's like you know the things come on the bottom side here there's very little rooting on the top side in relation to this stuff but there is over here i think with these so it could be that there's two issues here the 157 might have bad connectivity to the resistor array as well as some issues with the resistor array it could be tin whiskers a bit like we saw on that a500 plus i think that's what that problem was you know we took off one of the little emi components there didn't we if you i'll stick a link top right to that video and um yeah it could be the same sort of issue like tin whiskers you know corrosion having uh, spread and grown between uh, the ground and the uh, pin next to it or something like that i don't know um we're not seeing the plus five though are we so it's a or is it hang on we saw that same issue there though so i don't know maybe it is the same issue uh, anyway this probably isn't warm enough yet but we'll just have a go at just trying to desolder one or two of these pins and i've got the jitters here first thing uh, this morning so we'll yeah get some solder on there try to i really should change the tip size on this but just leave it time to melt yeah that did a good job actually it's a good idea to do this anyway i'm not sure i did this when i did the repair i just cleaned the uh, pins up and uh, obviously had a good brush around with the vinegar but there's nothing beats getting all the old solder off and of course we're assuming it's uh, going molten enough to flow through from the other side i could always just flip the board over in a minute and have a look at what the other side looks like 
open the back. The other interesting thing here, this ports look different, can you see that? And it isn't just a corrosion thing, I think this port has been swapped at some point in the past. Unless they just happen to use a different manufacturer for the one port versus the other on this particular board. I mean, I don't mean on all boards, I mean like maybe the run out of one brand just as this board was in manufacturing and... I don't know, it's uh, It's an odd one because the, before I tinkered with the solder points it looked like it had never been touched. So it's not like I reflowed it or the previous owner, they looked factory. Yeah, so all the solder's removed from there. So sometimes when I'm dealing with a problem like this, I like to measure things as I'm going along actually, just to see if anything's changed. Because there could have been a tin whisker between the corroded points on the other side, and now we've removed some of the solder, it might have gone away. 4K7, 80, yeah, 90 ohms, so. No, nope, it's not gone away. So before I even reflow that, next thing I'm going to do is just desolder that. Okay, take that off and let's measure it off the board. Because that'll be a clue. If the resistance is still an issue on the board when it's off and the resistor pack measures all right, it's obviously something else around here. But I certainly remember how annoying that 500 uh, plus one was. It was like literally took everything off before we eventually fixed it and then had to try and backtrack and work out exactly what, what, the, what the actual fix was. And it was, I think, a tin whisker. I'm not sure that's removing as much solder as I would like. I have to go over this a few times or give it a little bit longer. The station's set pretty high as well, about 430. But you tend to find, certainly what I found anyway on these uh, 2000 boards, you need something like this with uh, temperature control and uh, more power, you know, more ability to dump heat into the board in terms of wattage. I think it's also important to point out these pins here were not particularly adversely affected by corrosion so it could be some some level of corrosion's got on them yeah that looks pretty free now but looking free and being free are two totally different things so let's just uh, just grab a few pins and have a little wobble you've got to be really careful with these resistor rays because a bit too much physical stress and they break anyway so it might not prove anything I could literally break this damage this take taking this off and then go oh look it doesn't measure right yeah because you broke it when you took it off right it's sort of free yeah you can see all the pins moving now so that should come off so let's just uh, flip this over and uh, try and pull it off there we go so no through hole and if we have a look at that area yeah yeah you can see it's a bit dirty but it's not that is it so i've put that board out of the way so i mean it could end up being anything this it could end up being a short cap but mind you if it was a short cap i wouldn't expect the five volts to not be there so yeah sorry you can't see the meter there can you let's just get the meter on shot uh where's pin one yeah, pin one's down the right hand side here. So the second pin, I think, was the one before, wasn't it? It was balked. It was like 100 and some at home. So that's 4K7, that's right. That's 4K7, look, so the problem's got away. 4K7, 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 4K7. I hate problems like this. Seriously. So. So are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'm thinking, what on earth could be the cause? Um, so I guess the other thing we need to bear in mind is the other thing that's connected to these is this IC is here, isn't it? The, the 157. So maybe the 157's balked. That's a possibility. On the pins that are connected to these, where it's monitoring the pins, if you've got a short there, weird stuff's going to happen. It would also kind of make more sense... Um, rather than a bit of localised corrosion somewhere up here near the battery because obviously both ports are a problem here both ports and they're interfering with each other well the only way I could see that being an issue is if there was a problem here perhaps so I think that 157 could be the answer let's just measure the resistances again here just to see what we see now we haven't got the uh, resistor pack on the board we're going to see something not 4k7 obviously 3 meg roughly look 120 ohms so there's something definitely there 3 meg and there's going to be a, one or two of these along here in the 3 meg and was it this one that was balked so no that one's alright 3 meg 3 meg 
3 mag 3 mag nothing there so uh, yeah that second one let's see if we can follow that as a clue there could be two different issues that's showing 122 ohms which is th what these are here so th that's an interesting one isn't it let's just see if we can work out where that third pin goes to I'll put it on connectivity um, I'm not sure it's going to go direct to one of these pins Yeah, because that third one there. So this is in relation to the faults with the the right, left. I think it was. I think we had left and right, didn't we? Alternating between these. One of them is right. One of them it was left. But anyway, the third pin there. That's the one on this port. There was a problem. So it goes to the pin that's questionable. It's got a questionable resistance there, which could indicate these components here. Um, now, if I just measure, let's do that one. It's a dead short. So those are supposed to be a dead short. Where's it gone? That, that one there. So we know that that is not the issue. There's a cap, isn't there? And it's this here. Is it 0 0.055? That's going to be the resistance between VCC and ground. And I guess these are going to be the same. Hang on. That doesn't. Why doesn't that measure that way? And that doesn't. And that doesn't. So maybe this cap here is something to do with it, actually. Because that's what I think this is. I think there's a cap across here. Yeah, none of the other caps measure like that. Maybe this is a cap problem. Um, let's just follow the one on here that was balked, which was that one, wasn't it? So that's okay. And then we got a uh, cap there and there. That's all right. One there and there. Yeah, that's interesting. So the cap over here would appear to be shorting, I think. It's that. So I need to work out, flip it over, work out what that is. So the weird thing is I've took that component off. Uh, let me measure on the board. Uh, you can't see the meter, but you'll hear there's no beep. Hang on. Fi dot five five six. I'll swap the probes around in a minute. That one there. Dot five five six. So now the short has gone. Yeah. If I measure that way, point seven seven nine. That one. Hang on. Oh, hang on. That's not reading anything. So maybe it is about the IC. Yeah, there's no reading that way around, but there is on this one. I think. Yeah, dot eight eight four. So there is still some issue here, but in any, any case, but in any case, if we measure the cap, there's no short there, and I'll show you on resistance just so you can uh, see this. Uh, try and get the cap into position here. Nothing. Yeah, which is what you'd expect for a cap of that size. Nothing. No, uh, you know, it's open line. Um, Technically it's not, it will charge up, but you won't get a resistance reading. So the cap isn't the issue, having removed it hasn't solved anything really, but it has removed the immediate resistance we saw across there of what was it, 120 ohms or something. So, I don't know, I'm really confused. I hate problems like this, so i going to get the fiberglass uh, pen, this isn't it, this is a wire brush, onto there and onto these things here, get a bit of flux on there, a bit of desolder braid, mop up the things there and maybe consider getting the resistor pack back on. I think the next thing to do might be to take this off actually and see if our weird resistances and things disappear but it, it could still be corrosion around this port maybe so i've got the fiberglass pen here let's uh, just gently go over the connections here even those two vines that were kind of like masked by the area and the inside of there a little bit and of course we could do some connectivity a bit easier there now because you can see where some of these traces go. Um, yeah, that's not too bad there. But I think what I will do is just get uh, a little bit of flux along there actually. And then just do a little bit of work with the uh, desolder braid here just to try and uh, clean those up somewhat. So they're going kind of silvery. That's what we want. It's not especially corroded here, but can you see the difference? I mean, look at those ones compared to these two here. We've uh, nearly accomplished that particular task. The second one's a bit fuzzy. Yeah, there we go. That's looking pretty good. 
So whilst here I thought let's pull this port off so I just ended the nut there and then it was dead loose and it's just come straight out. So we've got no through hole or anything there you know so the traces are fine they look horrible <laughs> don't get me wrong but uh, there's no issue so you know what it could just be some connectivity there that might be the issue you know you got what looks like a combination of uh, corrosion uh, but also some of the spray on stuff here could be some like rust that is joining some connections it really could be that simple maybe this is the answer so we'll use some vinegar here initially that's like a sticky pad there, that brown thing, but anyway, we'll uh, use the vinegar initially, and then we'll do the same thing we did with the resistor array, uh, you can't quite see over there, which is to uh, get some flux on, tin it up, inspect it, but before we do that, where's the fiberglass pen gone? Uh, yeah, it'd just be wise to uh, just do this. There you go, you can see the corrosion coming off the surface. I'm kind of pleased that I'm revisiting this to be honest because you know what this is something that should have done when I did the repair you could argue remove all these but yeah, I think if anything it's just going to be some conductivity as a result of a bit of rust and corrosion around there anyway that's had a little bit of a, a clean now so let's get some flux on tin them up and then the solder will make a nice bite when we solder this back on you can see that all of the horrible solder just came away along with the corrosion so I've got no concerns about putting that back on. Having said that, I can't remember what I did yesterday, so you know what, maybe I did it. I tell you, as I'm getting older, I never thought I'd hear myself saying these things. I'm getting old, and I forget what I've done half the time. I tell you what, it's amazing how many times recently I found myself watching my own videos to remind myself on how something works, or a fix for something that I uh, worked out in the past and I'm, I'm sort of starting to forget already I'm like I remember doing it I don't remember exactly what the specifics were so yeah I end up watching my own videos it's crazy there you go look at those look nice and silver it'd be funny if this solved it after all these uh, all this messing around, removing caps and resistor arrays. I'm melting that plastic there, I can smell it. It's a horrible smell just on the edge there. Anyway, let's clean that up with some IPA and let's get that port back on. Well, I'll inspect it first. But you know what? I don't see any issues around there, if I'm honest. Because all the connectivity is on the other side, there's like one trace here, well I can see clearly that's like a really good trace, there's no corrosion on it. Yeah, I just checked there, no issues at all. I did just uh, micro adjust this glue here, this glue pad, just pushed it down a little bit like that, away from these pads, so that when we solder it's not going to uh, make a stinky smell again. Uh, anyway, let's just uh, try and line that up and get that through, that's it, let's flip it over. It does give me an opportunity to straighten this a little bit because it was kind of like skewed just to the side ever so slightly. So I think that is a replacement. Don't know when in its life it was replaced, but yeah, I've got that a lot straighter than it was before. I think if I just uh, now bring the iron in, I'm going to need to use the uh, desolder station to reflow these because, well, maybe not actually. I was going to say this might not provide enough heat, but yeah, that's not too bad. Let's just uh, anchor that corner there. The interesting thing is, well, this port obviously it's, it's got holes in it for screws. There's no um, wings like there are there. It's uh, definitely a different style of port. But that is deliberate though, because you do have one of those screws going through the motherboard actually. So, yeah. So, I need to remove a bit of this solder putting a bit too much on the odd pin there. It's flowing really well now though. Let's just do these front ones, that's a ground. A bit more there. I quite like a little beady sort of solder points. Although technically you could argue there's a little bit too much. There we go, that's not looking too bad. I can just reflow a few of these just to resize some of them. Let's get rid of the solder. 
from the tip and uh, just one more pass that's not so bad they look pretty much symmetrical in size and we've got a really nice flow so I've used a cotton bud here just to bob in uh, the little gaps there which is a bit difficult um, I'll now just get the toothbrush and we'll just tilt the board a little bit like this and have a little brush like this just get that cap back on next to the camera resistor pack but before we do that I'm just going to have a measure around again just see if anything's changed in terms of any unusual readings of resistance there if the 120 ohms had disappeared from uh, wherever it was middle pin on that one I think then I would have high level confidence that uh, things have improved many to dissolve this port but there's no corrosion around there it hasn't got that far up the board so I would be very surprised if it was corrosion around here so meter on resistance mode again let's measure from ground to uh, there 20 meg it's strange isn't it how we I don't know we seem to have not got the problem anymore I mean we've got 20 meg there we sh should we have anything there bear in mind that's got its cap missing at the moment I don't know certainly that way around let's try changing the probes you might not think that's relevant but you're putting a charge into the board here when you do this so the orientation you know the way around these are can make a, a difference even just measuring something like resistance three meg look three meg same as that one there maybe the problem's gone away i don't know let's measure these ones three meg three meg i don't know maybe we've solved it maybe it just was something around here but i'm having a hard time trying to think how would something show in here cause the problem here that's, that's the thing I don't get uh, this doesn't look like it's straight here but trust me it is it just protrudes more than that one um, uh, before it was kind of like I like to say skewed to the side anyway that's that's all right so let's get the resistor pack back on so pin one here is to the left so uh, there's pin one so put it that way around now I could just uh, tidy the pins up there but you know what they look pretty pretty straight you know if you had a bit of corrosion on the resistor pack there once you've measured it make sure it's all right you could just use the fiberglass pen just to clean the uh, pins up a little bit if they were corroded but uh, yeah I'm convinced they're, they're all right actually so let's just uh, solder one pin and then I'll flip it over to make sure it's nice and straight Yeah, it's just tilting from forward a little bit, so let's just eat that. Like that. Right, the resistor pack is as straight as that's going to get, so let's just commit to soldering the other pins on it. As you can see, that's back on. So we'll clean up again with some IPA on a cotton board. And then we'll have a brush again. So the only thing missing off here now is the capacitor. I'm going to measure again before I stick that back on there. And then the dry brush, get any hairs and fibres and things and final bits of moisture off it. So you know what, that's not looking too bad so far. So we resoldered that port there and cleaned under it and that's looking good. And obviously this has been off and cleaned up. And from the top side here, that looks fine. I need to get the nut back through here, don't I? So I believe the nut was here, actually. Right, right, that's all the way through. Just need to just uh, hold it if I can and tighten it now. I think it must have been the corrosion here, actually, on the other side. You know, under underneath where the uh, connector goes and joins the PCB. Because if I measure from here now, this pull-up before jump, it was like 4K7. And then we had a difference on the next pin. It was like 120 ohms. Look, 4K7. 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 Uh, 4K7. <laughs> you can see the pattern now. They're all 4K7. 4K7. 4K7, 4K7, 4K7. So the problem seems to be solved. The only thing missing is that cap. So I'll get that cap back on. I'll do another quick check and then we'll just go test it. I think that's fixed it there. Right, so I've just got to get this uh, cap back on. We'll just uh, give these uh, 
points here at the final clean before I do that. It's a bit hard to cover those with braid, you know, to use braid to turn them like I did with the other points there, but yeah, you can see they're super shiny. Super shiny. That should do the job. Right, the cap's back on. Let's just uh, check the resistances again here. Uh, on the questionable pins, let's just do that. Let's go from uh, ground. I'll swap the meter probes around in a minute. It was the third pin here, wasn't it? 4K7. And it was the second one there. 4K7. So, just for consistency, third pin. 4K7. Second pin. 4K7. There we go. So, uh, what fixed it? The uh, corrosion, I think, under there, maybe. Had to because although we did see a change and we got the resistor pack off, and then we had one resistor still, one lot of resistance, so maybe some corrosion here as well. I don't know. <laughs> it's another one of these, I'm not 100% sure on the issue with both ports here. Because you think, how would this port interfere with that port? I'll have a look at the schematics in a minute. Maybe the H and V are showing together. I don't think they are. I think they've got separate pins on the 157 there, so. It's, I don't know, they're always strange when you get problems like this on ports on these. They can confuse. So we're all plugged in and booting up. And if we go into control ports, problem solved straight away. Because before, just moving the mouse a little bit, well, I, it got so bad I couldn't move it at all. And we can now move left, right, up, down. It's not doing anything with port 2 stuff. This was going nuts here when you moved the mouse. And uh, left button, right button, there's no middle button on this one. And then if I move the joystick, left, down, right, up, yeah, working perfectly. No issues. We can just uh, further test that actually. You can go, port 2 is a CD32 pad. No, it's not. It's analog. No, it's not. It's a mouse. And then plug the mouse, plug the mouse into that port, and just test it as a mouse, just like we did the other one. There we go. So in terms of analog, it's working fine. And... Uh, yeah, I need to put the back in the other port now. So you can have two mice. A lot of people don't realise you can have two mice on an Amiga. You can't obviously use them both to control the cursor, but in certain games that might be a thing where you could use two mice, I don't know. And this is what I was trying to play, actually, when I became aware of that problem. Uh, and it just deteriorated after cleaning around the port. I guess the clue there was cleaning around the port. You notice that the video, so the fade is slower here. Is it, is it because I've only got one mega chip RAM, maybe? I don't know, it could also be because I'm using the TF520. But this game now behaves normally, except for that slow fade in and fade out. But that might be normal on a 500 or a 2000 when you're using you know, pretty much stock specs in terms of processor. Yeah, it's a bit slow there, fading in. I'll test it on the other 2000 board at some point just to see if it behaves the same way there. But what was happening before, you see, I was doing this and then suddenly the character would be doing that, jumping on its own, I wasn't even pressing up. It drove me nuts. I have seen that before though. Just on this board. Yay, yellow sweet. Makes you fire super fast. So it's been used for hours and hours and hours. Uh, now this uh, board did feature in uh, some of the videos you've previously seen actually. So there was a point, uh, I forget what it was, it might have been in that um, AT card, AT clone card video where I was like, what's the problem with the, uh, you know, it starting on its own time gap. That was filmed after this actually, and I've always had that problem on this board. It's really weird, but there are no controller problems with this at all. You can see the ports look uh, nice and clean here. And uh, yeah, the work around there looks all right. You, you can sometimes get uneven solder when you're uh, reflowing those, you know, it doesn't always leak through properly. And obviously it looks really clean down here, it almost looks factory look. After it's, uh, well, you can tell like, if you put a bit more solder there than was on the original port there. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty much good as new. Uh, and the main thing is it does work. So as I mentioned before, yeah, you could say that this is an extension of the original repair to this because the thing that I didn't do, should remove this, should remove that. Still haven't removed that, but 
I don't have any keyboard problems at all. Um, you know, there is some corrosion just down there a little bit. You can see it just a little bit. But as I said uh, earlier, again, the connections are on the underside. So there's just it's cosmetic, most of this stuff here. Um, but it probably would be a good idea to just remove those if the corrosion is as extensive as it was on this one here. And then just do all the cleanup and stuff that I've done here. The thing that I still don't quite get, and this is what always confuses me when I get a fault like this, is you saw that when we took the port off and we removed the resistor, we still had, I'm sure we did, I'm sure we still had that uh, 120 ohms measuring somewhere on one of these pins. And that was with the cap off as well. So I'm like, well, I don't know what point that disappeared. I just, you know, cleaned around here a bit more, toothbrush around here. Maybe there was a separate issue here. That could be the issue. And I'm more inclined to think that the problem was more likely to be here. This may need to come off yet because. The horizontal and vertical connections for each port, yeah, they go into different pins on here. So when we were going, I don't know, up on one, it was like affecting the other. The only way that could happen is if there was a connection here somewhere, yeah? Um, or maybe a connection on the resistor array. So maybe it was just uh, some corrosion around there. I don't know, I can't be 100% sure. But anyway, you've seen what the process was. So if you've got a fault like this and you followed this guide and you still haven't resolved it after doing, you know, removing those, cleaning up, removing that, checking that, cleaning up, cleaning up all around here, checking everything with regards to the caps and things, then that's your next course of action. It's the most logical thing. Um, or the resistor ray or two up here, perhaps. But anyway, yeah, it's working fine. So anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.